Yeah, hello. Easy Jeezy again. How you doing today? Uh, I want to continue on my Weber Delorto carburation series and uh, in order to uh, keep that carburetor running right and uh, keep the dirt out of it I just want to go over care and maintenance and installation of uh, these K&N cotton filters. Now I'm not saying that I do it the right way or the wrong way. I'm just saying I do it the easy way. Been doing it this way for countless years and it seems to work for me. So uh, let's get started. All right. It was easier for me just to bring the darn thing in here rather than moving the camera back and forth because I, I don't have editing uh, software yet. I hope to get that, but uh, okay, let's get started. Now, we got our cotton filter, and what we have is one of these outer wares. It's a polyester type material that uh, breathes real freely, and it kind of keeps the first, it's your first line of defense. I want to make sure that I got everything lined up here, okay. It's your first line of defense, and it, it'll catch the big chunks, and uh, hopefully the oil on the cotton filter will do the rest. You got to be kind of careful with these things, and uh, if you over oil your carburetors, these things are going to get uh, oily, and stuff is going to stick to them. Now, what I was referring to in uh, my uh, carburetor tuning video is try not to take the cotton part the main filter media part off when you're out in the sand or in the dirt. Take the lid off the top, reach down there and get that jet if it's a Delorto carburetor. You shouldn't have any reason to get in there if it's a Weber, but uh, anyhow. So, first of all you got these polyester type things and they get dirty just like everything else. So, uh, just show you what I do to clean mine. I just get some warm water. I can't believe I don't have that stuff out. And I'll just take some uh, I'll just take some dish soap. Here's some Dawn dish soap is pretty good. And uh, if you've ever used it very much, you'll find out it's hard on your hands too. It will just take whatever oils and stuff. So I just hand wash it like an old pair of socks. I don't have the uh, the board, you know. And uh, you can look at all that dirt coming out of there. Okay? That just works good. It just loosens it up. That's a little too hot. Okay, so you're just gonna just gonna loosen it up, and you're just gonna clean it up till it looks like kind of clean. When usually what I do is wait till the the name comes out nice, you know, and you you can sort of see through it. You can see if there's chunks. This one cleaned up pretty quick first time, so just you just wring it out, take it outside in the sun, and twirl it around as hard as you can, just like lassoing a. a a cow with a with a rope. Just fling that thing around and snap it and try to get all the moisture out of it and leave it sit in the sun and it'll dry just a few minutes, especially if you lay it on something dark. It'll just dry out in a few minutes. Okay, so that takes care of the outerwear. Now, if you look at uh, my setup here, you don't have to over tighten the tops of these uh, the tin on this carburetor, on this filter media. You just get it down nice and snug. And what you see on the top here is uh, what they call, if you're a uh, follower prepper channel, they call it a ranger band. But uh, I don't know, you can tell what that looks like. Black gloves, that ain't going to help very good. But uh, I just take a, an old uh, bicycle inner tube and take a pair of scissors. And I cut a piece of that inner tube off and voila, we have a ranger band. And what that's going to do, so you don't over tighten is just keep your wing nuts from unscrewing. I think most of these use 1024 all thread and you can buy it at Ace Hardware. Uh, you can buy all thread and make your own, whatever size you need or want. And uh, okay, so we, we're out there and be sure and carry a few of these 25 cent wing nuts in your tool pouch, uh, on your buggy, or in your car, in the glove box, whatever. And okay, the next thing I've got here are these uh, rubber backed washers. Now what these come from is uh, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, same thing. If you are uh, putting one of those metal roofs on, uh, on a building or something, they run the screw through this uh, washer. So it's like a patio roof washer. 
Uh, I think if you ask for that, you'll kind of get in the right department. They're usually in the specialized bins back there in the nut and bolt department, but it's a uh, it's a rubber backed uh, roofing washer. So a couple of those that spreads out the weight, gives it a little cushion, and uh, prevents you from over tightening it. I've seen these things. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the things I've seen. Uh, you don't want to dimple these things. You want it to have a nice even pressure clear around the outside. Okay, you take your top off. You can wipe that stuff down with a paper towel or whatever. Alright, now, this is about as far as you want to take it with a, with a Delorto. And, uh, you know, if you got to get to that idle jet, there's two main jets in there, one for each throat. And there's two uh, idle jets in there as well. And we covered that in other videos. So you just leave this. If it's out in the open, it's easy to do. If it's in a sedan, it's easy to do. If it's in a Carmen Ghia, it's a little harder. It depends on what kind of vehicle you have, really what kind of carburetors you want to look for at the flea market, whatever. Okay, so let's get down with this. All right, take off our, uh, take off our air cleaner. And I noticed in the K&N package, they have a kit that you buy and it has cleaner in it. And it's just, it comes in a spray bottle, and I noticed while I was spraying that stuff, it had a particular aroma to it. So, uh, one day I had bought some Simple Green, and I said, wow, that stuff sound, smells familiar. I smelled that before. It's kind of pungent, kind of strong, and uh, I said, man, that'd be a lot cheaper than paying 25 bucks for one of those kits. So what I'm going to do is I got my refill here. I'm just going to pour exactly the right amount in. No more, no less. Now I hope you were paying attention right then, because if you can't, you can't be off. Not even the slightest little bit. It's got to be exactly that much. So don't forget to put some water in there. And this stuff too is uh, hard on the hands, so uh, that's why I'm wearing the, the gloves, which I bought at uh, Ace Hardware. They got them blue ones and stuff. These ones, these black ones, seem a little bit uh, heavier duty. Okay, so what I do is I just get it on spray mode here and I spray on the inside I'm not spraying it so much on the outside and I'm just spraying it all the way around all the way around trying to make sure you get enough in there where it's going to go down inside the uh, creases and you spray it in there usually I've, I'm doing both carburetors both air cleaners so uh, when I get one done like this, I'll set it aside, and then I'll grab the other one and I'll get that ready. By the time I got that one done, this seems to have soaked long enough, and then what I do is I get my water going here. Just kind of warm, and you don't have to have a blast in a way. You know, there you go, like that. And I look at all the stuff coming out. I hope that's showing up. And I just, just use the water. You don't want to damage it, and you don't want to make holes in that cotton so that debris can come through. But you just just want to get all of that simple green out of there and all that garbage. You can go on the outside as well, you know. Maybe we should uh, we're kind of soak it on the inside. I'm just going to give it a lick here. And you can do it on the outside as well. You know, you probably want to because it's going to be... You're going to have sometimes looking like a corn dog, man. It'll just really be piled up in there. All right. So, again, I'm not going to do it on the outside. I'm going to do it on the inside. And basically an indicator, you can look at the water that's coming off of it. When you quit getting mud off of it and it starts looking fairly clean, you're done. Pretty simple. I think, I'm not sure whether it tells you in that recharge kit, the K&N recharge kit or not, how to do that. That probably does, but anyhow, I thought I'd throw it up there so all this stuff's in one spot. Alright. I really don't want to, I don't want to push it in farther. I just want to get it out. So, just keep going back and forth, round and round. This air cleaner is really old. <laughs> I'll admit it kind of like me. Ah! Really old and uh, it holds its shape. I really don't see these things going bad. Uh, I only know of one set that I've had to replace and that was because they got cooked in the car in an engine compartment and they were so rock hard from neglect 
that uh, they uh, it was just hopeless. Even the the uh, neoprene bottom and top were were trashed on those sides. I mean, just it was just hard. You couldn't move it. Uh, the, there was a cut through uh, the screen here, and uh, while you're doing this, you just look for it, you know. And you could always uh, take your uh, your mag light or flashlight, and you can you can look through here, you know, and you can kind of get an idea, you know, if you got stuff that's this bad in there. Hold it up to the sun, whatever you want to do, you know. And uh, okay, so same thing. You want to flick this thing. You don't want to throw it and let have it crush on the ground and get all bent up and you can take it out on the driveway in a sunny spot or a flat rock and you can drop it like that drop it right on its on its side get it flat and then what you have to do is leave it sit out there in the sunlight to dry and uh, you'll know when it's dry you just like a lasso you just flick this thing around and when I recharge it I I go from the inside and I just give it a little spray. It wouldn't be a good idea to do it now because it's wet. I wait till it's completely dry. Give it a little spray. This this particular can, the last one I bought, it comes out in a stream. I hate that. It comes out like silly string. It's like, I want to spray. I was thinking about taking a, a nozzle off of a paint can, but I, I think I tried that and it wasn't the right kind or something. But you want a fan spray. You want to fog it. And you don't want it soaking, dripping with stuff. It doesn't have to be red. You're not painting this thing. And that oil that's in here is going to wick through it. So if you can decide which side's going to be your top and bottom, you know, put it on the inside. You can always add more later. Put it on the inside. And then when you put it on the carburetor, it's going to wick down and it, it, it'll, it'll be working good. And that keeps this from getting soaked with oil and crud sticking to that. So... Uh, that kind of helps your outerwear. Now, as far as putting these things on, I have seen every kind of unbelievable thing on the sand. Do not take silicone caulk and caulk it to the top of your carburetor thinking it's going to seal it. There's no need to do that. What causes that you keep getting plugged up jets in your carburetor? Well, it's because there's junk in there. So you think, well, must be coming through the air cleaner. If your air cleaner isn't mounted right, that's true. And seems like no matter what you do, it's going to get in there. It can be from old dried up fuel that's in your tank. And the modern fuels now with the ethanol in it, the alcohol seems to dissolve some of that stuff. It'll break loose. It'll get caught sideways in a jet. You hit a bump, it turns sideways and blocks the jet. You hit another bump or let off the gas, it changes the pressure and it, it goes straight. It runs great for a while and 100 yards later you hit a bump and it starts popping again. That's when you start need to go through the jet routine and start checking the jets. Um, what I, when these velocity stacks are just flanges on the ends of these stacks. When you take off those two bolts, that comes off. Those flanges will cover, they'll come right up and touch. They'll also, when you buy them, they come right out to the, they come, they protrude where the seating surface is for your, for your air cleaner. What I did was take them off, took a file, I traced down in there, where I needed to trim it without cutting into the hole. I gave myself room by my jet stack holes here so that I'm not overlapping that and fighting it with a screwdriver when I need to get my jet out, getting in the way. You can trim this stuff. You can do whatever you want to it. It's yours. You know, make it nice to work on. Give yourself a nice flat seating surface. Don't put grease on it. I, I've seen people just cover these things with grease bigger and it's going to sit in there and it's going to make things better and it, it just seems to make gre uh, sand and dirt collect more to the outside on the bottom and it, it's restricting the airflow eventually and it's it's just giving something for the junk to stick to uh, I put them on dry if you want to use a little bit of grease here's a little secret take a little blob of grease and put it right down here around the hole, the toilet bowl, where your jet stacks are because there's air vents right there. And that's where the dirt that does get through and clogs your jet, it bounces around, goes down the hole, goes down in the float bowl, gets pumped up, goes through your system, and uh, it gets caught in the jet. And that's the name of that tune. So you, I've seen uh, people also where they took some... Uh, like that 3M double stick tape, that real good stuff, and they wrapped it around the outside of the velocity stack and then took your Ranger band and put that on there because remember anything that you have in here 
could come loose and go down the into your engine. So you want to make sure if you're going to put anything like tape or or uh, anything that uh, might come loose, uh, and you want to make sure your nuts and bolts all have uh, either nylock nuts or lock washers on them. Uh, you don't want anything bouncing around because if you're pounding around out in the sand dunes or the uh, or the desert someplace, uh, there's all kinds of things that anything could pop up there. I once saw a guy who, uh, the main jet stack, it was side hilling, and the buggy started running bad, and he just let off, coasted to the bottom, and we all went over there to look at it, and he finally took the top off the air cleaner, and that jet stack had fallen, gone up over the top, down inside, and when it was laying on the butterfly, we could see it with the sunlight, it was laying on the butterfly. If, he'd, if anybody would have touched the throttle, it would have opened up and gone down by the valve and he'd had to take the whole carburetor and stuff off. Nobody had needle nose or anything long enough to, to reach down in there and get it. So he uh, made a trip back to camp on the end of a toe strap and uh, and rescued that thing. But uh, those are the types of things I'm talking about. You know, if, you, if something changes, stop and check it out uh just you know just just take a look it can avoid uh, a lot of problems in a short vacation so uh all right so we're going to put that thing back on now well, there's no point in doing this because i need to let it dry out in the sun you get the idea put the darn thing back together just the way we took it apart make sure that that everything is seated in there nice but you don't need to to clog it up with a bunch of goo and grease and caulk and silicone and all those things put your uh Put your washers back on. Get your uh, get your wing nuts on, and and don't over tighten the darn things. If you keep everything nice and and straight from from when it's new, and you can buy all this stuff. Uh, you can buy parts for uh, Delorto carburetors from CB Performance. A lot of the companies sell them. One of my new favorite suppliers is Carcraft, and I, that's where I got my uh, connecting rods and a few things from, and they were real good about everything. Take your Ranger band, put it across the top. And uh, that will keep your wing nuts from getting loose. And, you know, over a period of time, you can't just put this in a car and forget about it. You need to check it, you know, once a month, whatever you're checking the oil and stuff. You know, it doesn't hurt to uh, just to feel through the top and see if it's still there and it's connected and all that sort of stuff. Just doing maintenance. Same thing in a car. Uh, you can have just as many trouble problems in a car. So, uh, hope this helped. And uh, that's the way Easy does it. So, uh... Have a great day. Work on your project. Talk to you later.